Hello again, everyone. I'm Sonia, the UX and UI designer at GeoMarvel, and I'm excited to be back again to talk about design. In previous videos, we walked through understanding and creating low fidelity and high fidelity interface for map based design. In this video, I'll be walking through the process of creating a map to bring life to data. Before creating a map, we need to understand what kind of map we're creating by looking at existing data. So we're going to start with data that have chosen around heritage-based museums in the Washington DC area, followed by the application of map design or cartography to help users understand and navigate the information with ease. Cartographic design principles include creating a map that reflects the purpose of the data, its practical function and its aesthetic appeal to help users understand the information. Let's begin with a collection of data of the heritage maps in the DC area and plug the top pieces of information into an Excel sheet, including the name of the museum, the address, whether it's open or closed, museum hours, contact information, the link to the website, the public rating, tags, and a web services image link to take us directly to the downloaded image. It's important to note here that the categories need to be organized into a URL style for the data to be properly processed when downloading the CSV file. Once we have all the basic information in there, and we included the public rating for users to be able to decipher which museums rank at the top to plan their visits accordingly, we can go to latlong.net, input the addresses, and extract the latlong coordinates to have the data points accurately inputted on the map. Now we're going to download the Excel sheet as a CSV file. Enter the ArcGIS online portal, go to the content tab, click on new item, drag and drop our CSV file, create a hosted feature layer, make sure the fields we want to add are selected, including the latitude and longitude, and name our file for easy access. Now we can open in Map Viewer Classic to see and style the data points. We can click on the feature layer and see the right side toolbar come to life. We're going to click on Styles. Choose a field from our CSV file. In this case, we want to display the different public ratings for the museums. And then we will have multiple styles to choose from to display our data. We're going to choose the counts and amounts style data to clearly classify the varying ratings and click on style options. We'll click the edit icon under the symbol style and update the vector point by choosing a symbol that matches the data, like a museum-like building under point of interest. Then we come to the color scheme. Since the range of the ratings is small and on a five point scale, We'll group them into a set of colors for clear contrasts of blue, green, red, and pink. Since it's heritage museums, we want to make the colors come to life with vibrancy, range, and contrast. We can increase the size to around 32 pixels for a clear visual and update the icon color as well under vector marker. We want the outline of the data point to be visible and thicker so users can immediately identify the point by changing the color to pink and decreasing the outline of the vector marker to 2. Next, we're going to break down the ratings into groups. We're going to make sure the classify data toggle is on and go with four groupings and natural breaks for a clear reading of the ratings. Then we'll click done and done so our changes can be applied to the data set. There are other elements in the right-hand toolbar that we can access to refine the style, such as with effects. We can include a drop shadow to give the data points some depth, for example, and make them stand out. We can click into the drop shadow section to update the details of the shadow. We can enable clustering, which groups the data points, and we can also manage the pop-ups that appear when a user clicks on a data point. Make sure the Enable pop-up toggle is on. Then we can begin to add field lists with a specified format inputted within the bracket. Make sure to remove the fields already in place, and when creating a new field list, duplicate what we already have to not duplicate our efforts of removing the additional fields that are there. Our pop-ups should then auto-populate according to the corresponding data point. Next thing we can do is enable labels, since it's important to know which museums we're viewing and where they are situated. 
We can design the label by including the museum name as the label field and editing the label style. Let's go with purple to complement the fuchsia outline of the data points and make sure the colors contrast so users can clearly see the words. We want to increase the size of the label to 14, which makes the label legible and clear but not overpowering to the data points. We can also adjust the positioning and give the lettering a halo for clarity against the map. And we can make our halo white. Now that we have the basics of our data set, we can imagine how a base map would complement the data aesthetic and use the vector tile style editor to create it. Once we click on Get Started, we will have the option to choose from a plethora of base map styles that focus on various features, whether it's the basics or the labels or the creativity of the map. We want to choose a basic topographic map, though, that shows all the features we need, from roads to city areas and boundaries. We can utilize the left-hand toolbar to make changes to the design elements of the map. And although we can edit layer styles, edit by color and edit icons and patterns, we're going to focus on the quick edit section to touch on the map design changes holistically and cover the basics. We're going to update the color of the land, the water, the roads, boundaries, buildings, and nature. And we're going to move toward blue, purples, and pink hues on the color scale to match the data points we previously touched on. We'll lean towards a light gray for the land so it's muted behind the data layer, but increase the size and boldness of the labels to understand the areas where the museums reside. We can change the font to the commonly used Montserrat and make it semi-bold to stand out. We're going to make the water a dark blue to contrast against the gray land and provide clear boundaries. Let's make the roads a dark gray for some contrast against the land and a better understanding of locations. We'll make the roads narrower though so they don't distract too much from the data points. It's important here to generally know the areas, but not necessarily the street names. I think we can make the boundary color a bright pink to correlate with the data point outline and show the city boundary, emphasizing the location of the museums. The buildings would be important to see when zooming into a museum, so we can make them dark gray to contrast against the light gray land. And we'll mute nature with a light gray to blend with the land, since it's not very important to highlight in this context. First, we'll save the style and rename the file Heritage Museums in DC. Now we're going to pair the base map with our data. So back to ArcGIS Online. We can click on base map in the left-hand toolbar, click on add layer, and under my content, select the vector tile style editor base map we created. Click on the map and then select Use as Base Map, where our changes will be applied. If we'd like to update any base map features, we can do that in the Vector Tile Style Editor. Click Save and then refresh the map in the ArcGIS portal to see those changes. And don't forget to save any additional changes made to the final map. That's a wrap for this tutorial on cartographic design using some fun data. If you like this video, please feel free to comment, subscribe, and tune into GeoMarvel's channel for more great geospatial-related content. See you next time!